Okay, wait a minute. Is this a bait and switch? Is this clickbait? No, it's not. I actually found a signed piece of Stickly at Goodwill. Stay tuned until the end of this video and you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there for the fun recollections that lie there. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I better pay attention to what I'm doing. Ooh! Okay, we're going to a flea market. Now, you know, oh my gosh, here it is, the last weekend in September. Is this the last? I think so. Or next to it. And I've hardly been to any flea markets at all this summer. My favorite flea market takes place on a Thursday, and it seems as though every Thursday has either been stinking hot or pouring with rain. So I just haven't been, but here I am today. All right, I don't know what we'll find. It's early in the morning, and sometimes it's difficult to film at flea markets, but we'll see what happens anyway. I certainly will show you the haul at the end. So thanks for watching. Well, here I am. Now, you know I didn't do any filming at the flea market, but I've got stuff to show you. It's difficult to film outside, and a lot of the flea markets here in this area are very crowded. And even though I got there early, we're getting into, well, we're in autumn, so we don't have a whole lot of nice outdoor time left before uh, the flea markets shut down. Well, they really, actually, they don't shut down. They go year-round. But as soon as we start getting into freezing temperatures in the morning, it makes it a lot harder to uh, get out and walk around a flea market. Uh, so anyway, let me show you what I have. Um, and I'm very excited. Ooh, we're going to start off with this piece right here. I've seen it before. I'm telling you, I've seen it. can't remember who made it. Uh, but it's one of the 1930s companies that made this very inexpensive glass vase. This is that fired on um, paint. So it's not green glass or jadeite glass. You know, it's clear glass. And then it just has numbers on the bottom. But I can't, I cannot remember. Anyway, I like the color. The uh, geese on the front and the moon. Is that the moon? Yeah, it's the moon. Are they geese? I don't know what they are. It's sort of, I guess it's sort of an Asian motif, maybe, maybe not. That was $5. Also, so that will be for sale. Uh, also for my own collection, I don't have yellow. I've got, I'm collecting all the colors I can find. So we recognize the Fire King D-Handle Classic uh, mug by Anchor Hawking. One in yellow. Look at this. So I go up to this table and here are all of these late Victorian cast uh, cast picture frames, you know, in the, the heavy metal, probably iron, but some kind of some kind of metal. Um, and the man has a ton of them. So I grouped them all together and he gave me one price, one unbelievable price. I'm going to tell you the price after I show you all of the frames. I have six of the frames. Uh, most of them, five of them need glass, so I've got to cut glass. I have to cut pieces of glass for them. So here are two that are matching, and I really studied these. Uh, it is a matching pair. Now, before I go too much farther, you want to really be careful when you buy these if you want the antiques, because uh, new, newer ones, have been made in places like India and so forth, and they're usually brass. The antique ones are heavy cast metal. Again, as I said, I don't know whether it's iron or not, uh, but, and then they're always painted with some kind of a patina. Sometimes it's a gold plating, sometimes it's just a gold paint. They do get respray painted over the years. All of these have nice old original surfaces. And even though the surface varies from frame to frame, if you want to preserve the value of them for antique folk, don't spray paint them. Now, if you're going to buy them for yourself, you're not going to resell them. You can do anything you want. 
but collectors like this old original finish. So we'll take a look. Oh, there's another, uh, are there are a few other indications if you have the old ones. Let me get this tape off of here. The way in which the glass is held in place, I should have done this. On the, uh, the way in which the glass is held in place on the antiques, well, for Pete's sake, you'll have uh, flat heads, you'll have screws on the back with these, uh, with little metal, little pieces of metal, almost the thickness of paper clip, and they'll slide up and down. Sometimes that's a typical clasp. There's another clasp I'm going to show you on the our fastener. Uh, the newer ones, the, the, the backing is different. Also on the backs, you'll often find um, a foundry mark or, or a foundry number. Sometimes you might find initials like JB for Jennings Brothers, but this one, and you have to look closely. Here we just have these numbers back here, which would indicate the style of this frame. Um, I haven't looked too closely for foundry marks. And then you also want to look at the easel on the back. Now here I can tell that the screw and the nut holding the easel holding, I guess it's not, is it easel? I think so. That screw and nut have been replaced, but this is the original uh, piece on the back that holds it up. Okay, enough about that. So here are two that match. Matching pairs, right? Anytime you have things that match, where am I looking? Over there. Matching pairs of anything almost always increases the value. So even though the finish on these is a little bit different, I think someone collected these and put a collection together over the years. Uh, there's nothing missing or broken or dented on either one of these frames. So these are late Victorian. This is 18... You know, 1880s, 90s, 1900. Once you get past that, all this fussiness really starts to go out of style pretty quickly into the early early Edwardian era. These two oval frames match. Now that's the only one that has glass in it. As I said, I've got to cut glass for all of them. Here are two oval frames that match. Look at these. And see, oops. See the old, the easel on the back, how it stands up? Yeah. These actually, I looked on the backs of them. Yeah, see these also have the old fashioned way that the glass stays in place. That's an old clasp on the back. So these are matching. Matching pairs are great. Now the other two remaining frames uh, are just individual. They don't they don't match. This is going to look very similar to this, but it's not the same. Believe me, I studied it. This one is a little bit different. Again, I need to cut glass for them. and this also. You'll see uh, this is a type of. A this is original too, and this is, this gives also indication that this is an old one, the way that clasp is on the back. So that's just that one. And then the last one is meant to be hung on the wall. There is nothing missing from the back. There was never an easel on the back. If there were and it fell off, we would see where it would have been <clears throat> originally attached. We can also see that there is two holes here and here where you would put a wire for hanging and the glass simply slips in and gravity holds it in place. These three tabs here hold the glass in place. So that one is meant to be hung on the wall. I wish there were two of these but it was only that one. All six of these frames, these frames can sell anywhere from, excuse me, $30 a piece at the low end up to 60 to $70.
I think the two pairs that I have together are going to be fantastic. Put your great great grandparents in there. And so I paid $30 for all six of these frames. Um, and I believe that the, the all six of them will easily sell for uh, $200 and, and upwards of that. Boy, I was excited. And I really don't, I don't need any of them. I've got a couple of these old fashioned frames that I keep on my mantle that have my great, great, grandparents in them that was a deal now let me show you yeah I spent a total of $61 today at the flea market the last thing that I bought last Sunday night I sold a Josef Inwald Czechoslovakian frosted glass vase that had seagulls on it that I bought a while ago at a antique no at a thrift shop in Pennsylvania I'm currently in New Jersey today, the, at the flea market today in New Jersey. Wait a minute, these, let these people walk by. At the flea market today in New Jersey, I found another Josef Inwald Czechoslovakian 1930s vase. Now this one, I recognize his work because I've been studying. The, the studying. We have fish on the front in a 1930s style, and these wonderful seahorses on either side of this old Czechoslovakian vase. Now this one is not marked, right? The one we had before said Czechoslovakia on the bottom. This one doesn't have that. So there may have been a, uh, a paper label on this one, but look how the fish are stylized. I love it, the seahorses and Boy, I went over this with a fine tooth comb. There are no chips, there are no flea bites. And every little pointy spot on this seahorse is just asking to be chipped. And it is perfect all the way around. So I even like this a little bit better than the seagull vase. And I loved that seagull vase. What I'm probably going to do is go and get one of my black glass bases, just like I did with the other vase pair those two together and uh, and put this up for auction. So whether you have, whether you just like sort of deco glass from the 30s uh, or a uh, nautical interior, just, I love it. And it's a cloudy day today, so you're not really getting to see how pretty this frosted glass is. Or sat It's actually satin, I guess, rather than frosted, uh, but wonderful. Yeah, I, I I couldn't believe it. Now, I did pay for this. Um, you know, I didn't get it for $10. I didn't get it for $20. <laughs> um, but I recognized it, and it's just a beautiful piece, and there's a profit in it for me, and I just, I had, I had to get it. Now, that's what I got at the flea market. But hold on to the arms of your platform rocker because you are about to be flipped out onto your shag carpet when you when I show you what I got at the Goodwill. Stay tuned for that, I'm coming right back. Well, what on earth is that? Oh, it looks like it's in horrible condition. Oh my goodness, it's the top of it is split in half. Somebody put a plant on there and there's this great big stain in the middle of it. And you paid $7, what did you pay? Don't tell me you paid $7 for that. You did. Oh my word. Let me go down here and see. Well, I can tell it's made of oak. Okay, big deal. Well, is it a big deal? Wait a minute, hold on. Let me turn it on its side and let me zoom in here. Some of you already know what you're about to see. Oh my goodness, have you fallen on the floor? Did your mouths just pop wide open? L and J G Stickly Handcraft. Are you kidding? Did I get an actual original piece of Stickly furniture at the Goodwill for $7? I certainly did. Now, my goodness, of course we know Stickly furniture doesn't do what it did in the 80s and 90s. 
it was heavily heavily collected and heavily reproduced there were i don't know four or five maybe six stickley brothers gustav is the most famous they're making furniture i think they were in new york state somewhere gustav goes out of business but his brothers uh remain and i think it's ludwig uh, is it Ludwig, Joseph, George? I'm gonna have to go back and read that history again. But this is the mark for Ludwig and one of his brothers here. That act, that that uh, uh, decal there dates this from oh 1905 to about 1912, 1915, something like that. And this is actually advertised in in the catalogs as a table. Uh, just table, not plant stand or stool. They just simply list it as a table. So I obviously have to glue it, clamp it back together again, restore the finish on the top. But you're going to get this honest, you know, mortise and tenon uh, construction here. We don't have any nails or anything holding it together. This is the old Mission Oak, and uh, we don't want to refinish the bottom of it at all just restore the finish on the top. I was really excited because it's the first signed piece of stickly that I've ever found. Uh, I've seen it in antique stores. I've never had an opportunity to buy a piece. So that was a real thrill for me and I'm gonna absolutely be able to repair this and make it look nice again. Mm-hmm. So that's the real thing, Mission Oak furniture, stickly. I could not believe it. It's a nice one. Well, before we wrap it up, I'm back at home now. And uh, how many of you remember the craze, the Mission Furniture craze of the 1990s with the uh, Dirk Van Erp lamps and the lamps with the Frank Lloyd Wright shades? I think this was probably one of the last brown wood furniture um, um, reissues of all time, but really big in the 90s. Here is a copy of the catalog, uh, the furniture of today. Now, this one is actually, let's go to the next slide. Okay, the work of L and J.G. Stickley. Now, that is Leopold and John George Stickley, Fayetteville, New York. There is uh, the sticker that's on the table that I have, the little table that I have in here, is from their catalog from around 1910 to 1912. And right in the middle there is the little tiny table that I've got. The measurements are the same. I know it's hard for you to see it, but that's it. Uh, and it just says table. Signed stickly pieces don't have the value that they once did, but I am thrilled to have it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. This is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying, thanks for watching, wait for the cat, and so long for now.